Hello everybody, welcome back to this No Such Thing as a Fish comic relief marathon and uh, we are going to press on now with our next guest and it is the 20th guest of the show for fact number 20. Now, this is, this is an old friend of the show. This is someone who first appeared in our lives as a little tiny hidden track on a record vinyl that we released uh, with our first hundred episodes or first year of Fish rather, and then came into the office to sit on our hundredth episode. We had a full, a full recording with him. It was an amazing experience. We couldn't believe we got to do it and we're so glad we've got him back again. So please welcome to the show for fact number 20. It is the lead singer of Slipknot and Stone Sour. It is Corey Taylor. Woo! Hey, Corey. <laughs> hey, Corey. Hi, Corey. Hi, Corey. Good motto. How are you? <laughs> Good luck. Here it is. The final. <laughs> I still, I still have my copy that you guys sent me. Like it's, hey. it's, up, it's up with my vinyl. Yeah, man. So cool, man. Um, wow. Well, thanks for being here, and let's kick into our fact. Uh, so it's time for fact number 20, and that is Corey. Okay, so the fact that I picked was the the five year the 500 year old man found in his thigh high leather boots <laughs> on the, the 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 mud the muddy shores of the Thames. <laughs> <laughs> it's just reading that I was like, because I I got to be honest, like the first thing that didn't that that jumped to mind was not necessarily uh, fishing. It was more <laughs> of like, was this the first iteration? Was like this the first iteration of like Gary Glitter's family coming to, you know, like the, I thought I looked at it from like a totally different angle. Yeah. Like this was yeah, like the yeah. birth of glam rock, right. like, a weirdo, <laughs> like Morris dancing thing happening on the yeah it was, yeah. Very strange. So this is we should we should contextualize it for the viewer, but the, so yeah. this is a skeleton, right? It's not a very old man just no. still <laughs> <laughs> trudging down the beach. Although that would still be a great story, like mm, it yeah, was yeah. an old dude. Yeah, I have got my hip. <laughs> <laughs> Even better in a way. Um, but yeah, I think they found him. They're always digging people out of the Thames, bodies and weird stuff like that. Um, yeah. But they found him and he was wearing, still had on his feet, thigh-high boots. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> I don't think they're as sexy, as you say, as the thigh-high boots one is imagining. Um, no, no. They they definitely looked decrepit. Uh, they looked hmm. like, they, you know, they, they, they looked like they'd been loved. You know, like somebody cared for them. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. could have been the mud too. Like I'm not entirely certain, but yeah. yeah. And what oh. we think is maybe he was one of these people who used to go down the Thames to try to find things in the mud and stuff like that, or maybe a fisherman or something mm. like that, or right. a glam glam rocker. Maybe we don't yeah. know. Like, yeah. Well, I know fishermen. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, like a lot of. Uh, I, wow, like th there's a certain type of river fisherman here in the states that wear big thigh high, like uh, they they wear the Leathermans and all that stuff. Um, they, I, I want to say like uh, they 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 fish for pike, maybe, but I'm not sure. I'm not I'm not sure what sort of fish is uh it comes out of the thames that doesn't include chips really you know? <laughs> i'll be honest cory i don't think we really eat the fish that come I out of would the thames either, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can drink the water you can drink the water of the thames i saw i went yeah. on a river tour yeah years ago i went on a tour of the river and the tour guide he plucked a glass he had a pint glass and he just said look at this disgusting water it's completely brown all the way through he said if you leave it for a day all of the silt will settle to the yeah. bottom and you're left with a, a sparkling clean and did you see water. him drink this water Andy? no yeah. no he just he claimed he'd done it once and that was it <laughs> right and he was out of hospital the next week so <laughs> it's definitely worth it dysentery and hep c yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, we had a, we had a comedian here, David Williams, who swam down the Thames, which yeah. seemed at the time he said he was going to do it. Quite a weird idea because it is famously a bit grimy in places. And didn't he get he got something bad, didn't he? He got gunged. I think they they released stuff into the. I mean, it what? wasn't intentional. What? No, no, no. There was a <laughs> like some sewage <laughs> outflow. No, it wasn't oh. a get your own back. Yeah, it was like, was like uh. <laughs> <laughs> he, he ate some sewage. 
Uh, yeah, he was pretty ill for a while. Yeah. yeah. Why is it every time I'm on with you guys, you tell me a story that grosses even me out? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. Let me wait. This is like, oh, we found one for Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is it true that um, the ter- this is something that I only know for music of bootlegging? Uh, you know, someone would bootleg music. But is it true that the term bootleg came from the fact that alcohol in prohibition times used to be hidden in a tall boot and and that is why it's got it's got its name uh, i've heard that? that yeah I, yeah, yeah is that true 100 percent dates to prohibition that that's for sure there's no we looked this up the other day and there's nothing before that because there's a few stories of it being like centuries before that it's definitely prohibition then it must be right it must be that. yeah it sounds yeah. Like, yeah there's a great there's a great documentary that uh two-part documentary that ken burns did all about the prohibition era and they actually talk about that where that term comes from and i remember them saying that it mm. came from you know people smuggling i want to say it was out of the pacific northwest but i might be wrong i know that uh there was a a mayor uh, right off of Seattle, he's like he he. They were using all of those islands just mm-hmm. off the coast of Seattle, like a, like up in Washington State, as ways to get past like the the international waters laws and whatnot. And so they were putting that they were taking all the booze out to the to to or they were no they were dropping the booze off in those islands and then just smuggling them ashore like that. And I, I want to say that it, like some of the they used fake lakes. <laughs> to, to bring them on, I mean, it's, it's what, insane. Yeah. What, what do you do with your real legs if you're using fake legs to smuggle food? I think. I, I what, think how is this working? A, I think there's a long conversation where you try to, they like, desperately try to convince someone you have three legs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you can imagine that, I mean, I, I mean, I'd be down for trying to. It's like, no, what are you? What are you implying that I don't have? <laughs> How dare you suggest? How dare you? <laughs> Were there fake shoes as well that had like the feet of like hooves underneath? Yes. Yeah, the, the, the heels. The the heels would slide out because it used to be those uh, those uh, the, those dressing like dress boots or whatever the the high heels like that, and you could slide the bottom of the heel off, and there were like compartments inside of it. Oh wow! Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, those, those ones don't, is it, the, it looks like a cow's been walking here instead yes, of, instead of a human. So yeah, 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 yeah. it's useful. There, there it's useful up to a point, I guess. Well these days, but yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. Wait, yeah. why does it look like a cow's been walking there? They sort of, there's a, there's a, a cutout bit where you cut out the, you cut out everything on the sole of the shoe, which doesn't look like a cow's hoof. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. like, um, you know, like when you cut a potato in half and then you put yeah. it in paint and you do that, it's like that. But yeah. Like, but you can surely you can only fit like a sh- uh, one of those miniatures or something. And no, do people have huge feet? These these were these ones were for tricking. It was clowns actually. It was all clowns. Yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh god, she's losing it. Did you know this is? I've gone on to like semi unrelated fact time now. But Andre Agassi, when he got married to Brooke Shields, wore lifts and he wore platform shoes, so he didn't look shorter than her. Okay. Yeah, well, <laughs> Dan completely fine with that. Yeah, that's fine. Why do we as men do that? I still to this day, my my wife is the same height as I am. Mm-hmm. Um, however, her waist starts a lot higher on her <laughs> body than it does on my body. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. So I just look like. I'm prepa- I look. I just look like the shortest person in the room at all times, <laughs> constantly. Even though she and I are both the same height, and she still looks like she towers over me. And it's like, right. a, I have a hunchback. B, I just need to just you know stand up a little straighter. But I, it has never, ever occurred to me to wear heeled shoes or boots to appear tall. Taller than I am. Is that strange or is that a guy thing? No, I mm, don't know. I like wearing a heel purely of a beetle boot. A beetle boot. I love a beetle boot. Oh, yeah, and... yeah, yeah. Well, there, it's a difference if, if it's a fashion because I have boots that have heels on them, but they're mm. not. They're not massive, you know. And I only really wear them if we're going out somewhere. Like I, but I and I certainly wouldn't wear them so I could tower above my. <laughs> <laughs> make any sense. I don't know like I have this pair of stilts but I think they're very fashionable and I just, yeah. <laughs> I just think they look good <laughs> <laughs> 
I I, look, do you know that um, this is a music related boot fact, but um, oh God. Freddie Mercury and David Bowie met over a boot before <laughs> either of them were famous. What do you mean over a boot? Do you they, mean over over a drink? Was no. it they forgot to take the drink out of the boot when it got there? David Bowie was in Kensington Market and he was looking at a nice looking boot that he saw <laughs> and the person who was working at the stall and fitted the boot onto him was Freddie Mercury. That's really? The first time wow. they ever met, yeah. The, wow. Uh, so this would have been what, David Jones era? Yeah, it was nineteen sixty nine. So I think Queen probably formed in nineteen seventy. And I right. don't I don't know where Bowie was at that point, but yeah, probably he was he was early days. Laughing gnome kind of territory. Um did they, like that. Did they hit it off? Like did they see I don't know much about well, the they must have in order to remember it, right? They must have. Right. Well, <laughs> they, yeah, they sang under pressure together much later. I'm, I'm right. not sure if I met someone who sold me a shoe 10 years ago that I, yeah. and I don't mean any offense to anyone I bought a shoe from 10 years ago. I wouldn't remember. <laughs> Even if they had become very famous. Yeah, I don't, that's, you'd that's never work out the connection. You, Andy. I'm just, I'm well, just letting you know. I mean, I'm, I'm a snob. I am a snob. But... <laughs> Corey's <laughs> memorized everyone he's ever bought anything. <laughs> just in case you never know. Just, yeah, that's true. I mean, you know, the crazy thing is I actually met, uh, I've met several singers in our genre before they've eventually made it. Mm -hmm. um, I met, before they got signed, I met Dave Williams from uh, Drowning Pool. Um, he was the original singer. Um, I, uh, I I met the guys in Mudvayne before they got signed. Like, the, it's, it's kind of crazy. Like, when you're on the road, you just never know who you're mm -hmm. going to meet mm -hmm. in life where... You, you, someday you're going to turn around and be like, "Hey!" But we, and <laughs> well, you were meeting them in other you were meeting them in other contexts. You weren't meeting them as well, selling you shoes. Oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't. Meet, yeah, I didn't meet them in a Chipotle or anything like that. Like, <laughs> right. It was like real. It was kind of on the same. But at the same time, like we were, we we're just underway on our first album, and they hadn't. I don't think they'd even had like any uh, like attention from record labels or anything. Mm. They were still. Mm. you know a struggling band so it's it's kind of cool to 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 look back and go oh yeah I, I remember you know knowing those guys before they like really you know yeah. kind of took off maybe it's you maybe you've got the golden touch it could be yeah. <laughs> you know? well, i'm not gonna brag but uh <laughs> <laughs> you made these guys <laughs> If you can just look over my shoulder at my platinum Star Wars. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, they're, they're actually, they're vintage, too. Are they the originals? Uh, yeah, that one is signed by David Prowse. <gasps> yeah, that one is actually a variant that was used in uh, Britain. It's a British, uh, British. Uh, it has different <laughs> colors and whatnot. And then that one is actually the Revenge of the Jedi. And it's actually... Um, if you look close, the, the sabers are flipped. Uh, uh, Luke has the red one and Vader has the blue one. What was so that a mistake or, or it was a misprint? Wow. Cool. Yeah. And I found those, I actually found those in London when me and my wife, we were just walking around and I saw a, uh, there was a, a place called Cinema Masterpiece and they had so many rad posters that, uh, I mean, like rep. Like I just went stupid. Like so, I bought a bunch of like <laughs> Hammer Horror stuff. I've got a vintage uh, 1958 Horror of Dracula. Right. Um, Christ, yeah, I, I'm yeah. sort of having a nightmare scenario of you and Dan going shopping together, <laughs> and <then laughs> spending <laughs> all of your money. And you know what's amazing? The guy who sold Corey the posters is now the lead singer of Cradle of Filth. So, <laughs> <laughs> I have to say. Well, yeah. Well, because they fired Danny. What is that? What you're saying? <laughs> no, just anyone you meet. Anyone you meet turns into right, yeah, totally. metal gods. <laughs> um, people have been uh, so speaking on shoes, shoes and boots. Um, yes. People used to consider them extremely important, more important than actually your essentials. So when the first pilgrims went to America, I think we might have said this before on the podcast, but the number of shoes that were taken compared to useful stuff like rope uh, was, I think one person had 126 pairs of shoes and 13 <laughs> pairs of boots. It just can't be true. I know we said this before, but it just can't be true. Can it? What you're talking about there is a shoe salesman who's taking over his stock. <laughs> 
Or <laughs> someone who is so panicked about the different social situations that might arise in America. I think that's it. What if there's a beach party? What if there's a tech party? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Imagine when he got to America and all the sizes are different. It's a nightmare. <laughs> oh. I need a, let's see, I need a heel for Marsh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what if it's swampy? What if there's sand? We don't what know if I need the terrain's to, going I need to, to give thanks for something at short notice. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's a great fact, Anna. Yeah, it, oh, it didn't work for them. That's true. <laughs> they should have brought of, more pounds. Uh, speaking of shoes on ships, uh, during the Crimean War, apparently this is what this is what happened. We um, sent our boots to the soldiers on the front oh, line, geez. but we didn't want anyone to get them. We didn't want you know any the Soviets to the Russians to come and take them or anything like that. So we sent the left boots in one boat and the right boots in another boat, uh, but then the right boot boat sank and so when it got to the front line it only had left boots no oh is that, is that, that the phrase, is that where the phrase act like you have two left feet came from <laughs> yeah, they were all it, was, it was a terrible massacre yeah it's yeah. not it's not nearly as funny as the phrase oh, the orders, left <laughs> <laughs> left left <laughs> that's beautiful that's amazing <laughs> Bo Brummel used to polish his boots with champagne. Wow. Something to try, maybe. Yeah. Um, Bo Brummel, possibly haven't heard of him, Corey. He's a very English person. But basically, he, who's the equivalent today? He was like the fashion icon of... Yeah, he invented, he invented suits like what Dan's wearing, basically. Like, there was really? nothing like that before he came along. Yeah, he was the biggest dandy of his day. And everyone, whatever he wore, everyone copied. Yeah, he took five oh, hours to get minute. dressed every day, which is... I want to say well. he was like, yeah, I mean, he was like... But then he died in a, 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 like extreme poverty. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I know yeah, exactly yeah. I know, I know oh. what you're talking about. Yeah. Bo Brummel's made it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Into the heavy metal scene. Yeah, he <laughs> well, did. <laughs> I mean, I'm not writing a concept album about him or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember reading something about him in one of the books I was reading, but he was, uh, he offended somebody, right? Like I think he fell it, out of fashion. Yeah. He, yes. He became a, a, like very true. full of himself. And I think he offended the king, didn't he? Every bridge that he had, right? Yeah. I think it was the Prince Regent, like James yeah. said. It was, it was the most powerful man. He was uh, like, I, I want to say he went to school with them. He might have done. Basically, he was at a party and um, the Prince Regent was there with some other person. So let's say he was called John Smith. I don't know what he was, but he right, would have been the Lord of something. And Brummel said, oh, John, who's your fat friend? And then after that, he just was like kicked out. Of society. Major right. beef. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, He was a real fat shamer, actually, Bo Brummel. He sort of introduced um, kind of wanting to look thin to the world, him and Byron between them. Yeah. And um, right. he had... He had Three hairdressers, one for the front of his hair, one for the middle, and one for the back. <laughs> that can't have worked very well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got... great if they all had three different styles to choose. <laughs> yeah. you, have, you have the party in the back, you have some weird kind of gloss, like <laughs> and then in the front, it's like Sia. <laughs> something very yeah. strange. Yeah. <laughs> He set those fashions. You look like you look like Joe Exotic, really. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There's the modern equivalent. We found there it. There it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so exotic. I laugh, but I actually don't know who that is. Who is that? Oh, we'll, we'll the, catch you up later. Uh, okay. The Tiger King. Interestingly, we've just been talking about Tiger Moms. This is the Tiger King. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh well, there you go. Well, I, I inadvertently brought it all back so yeah. <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> have you guys um have you heard of kerdeitsche this is a kind of shoe these are kerdeitsche with a k or kerdeitsche maybe these are traditional uh, australian aboriginal shoes which you only wear when you're on a mission of vengeance these oh, are great oh. they're really good they're made of emu feathers and matted blood drawn from a young man's arm Okay. <laughs> okay. They're, they're so on. these emu, these emu and blood slippers are so uh, evil. They're such an ill omen that women and children are not allowed to see them. Um, and to get ready for your vengeance mission, you have to go through an ordeal where one of your little your little toes one of your little toes is dislocated, um, uh, and you then you're ready to put your 
EB shoes on. You would remember the guy who sold you those shoes. <laughs> <right? laughs> <laughs> it, it reminds me of the Steve Martin uh, uh, spoken word thing, Cruel Shoes. Oh, you know? yes. So what was that? funny. He bought Cruel Shoes yeah. in the shop. Yeah. It's a short, it was a stand up <laughs> piece, but it was also his first book. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a great, it's oh, a great little it's story. It's really, really good. He's Things with the emu shoes, you would sort of, you know, you'd be like, oh, Corey's coming. Wait a second. <laughs> yeah. What's oh. on his feet? Oh, shit. Like, you know. Wait, what did I, what could I have possibly said to him <laughs> in the last couple of days? <laughs> I think. shoes mean business. I think you've got to wear a floor length gown on top and then you sign oh, up to your friend, you say hello, and then you just screw oh. a toe. Yeah. Actually, you'd have to go along your whole life always wearing the gown. Because otherwise people would know, right? Because they just right. see the gown. Right, right, Corey's yeah. wearing his gown. Oh, no, I better run. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, does. Do you really want to go on a on a like act of vengeance with a with a long tunic? Really, I mean, it's, it's not exactly actiony, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, these are these are slippers. They're not they're not very actiony either. They're made of yeah, emu I mean, emu feathers and blood right. that they're not going to hold together very well. Can you go to... in? Can you go in your converse and then change into them? Just I bet before you can. You, yeah, you must be yeah. able. To use, could you use an emu bladder as like a Nike <laughs> pump? <laughs> No? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm just spitball. I'm not trying to bring. <laughs> I reckon the cool kids were doing that. <laughs> if there's anything I hate, it's a non-pragmatic emu slipper. <laughs> it, doesn't, it just doesn't work. Put them to good use, guys. <laughs> It's a real sales trick leading with the emu's feather because that sounds does sound kind of comfortable. It's the matted yeah. rug that's off putting. You'd put that in small print, wouldn't you? And it's right. well, the blood is from a young man's arm. Yeah, it's not, he's not happy either. No, um, no. Well, not only that, but you have to sequester them from your family. You can't, like, nobody can look at, don't look at daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh. So the um, in the 15th century, the if you were to wear long boots, it would only be men who wore long boots, uh, and that was what did for Joan of Arc in the end. So when she got executed, I think you guys definitely would know from QI, but um, it was for dressing like a man that they finally did her for, uh, despite all the other things that they wanted to um, to execute her for. And it was the it was the thigh high boots that was the main thing it was like oh. you're wearing thigh high boots you must be a man if you're not a man we're going to execute you she was just wow. ahead of her time yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was the julie I mean, roberts of her day yeah <laughs> yeah there you go things Joan of Arc's never been called before <laughs> <laughs> um someone like, else like that was a casting miss you know? yeah <laughs> <laughs> it really was <laughs> oh we uh, we talked about the Paralympian, that Paralympian who has Josh Sunquist, who's got, he's missing his left leg and he has a soulmate. So I think he, because he realized that whenever he bought shoes, he had to buy them in pairs. Uh, shops rarely want to sell you just the right shoe. So <laughs> he should have been in the Crimean yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he put a call out to say, look, does anyone constantly need a left shoe? And someone who is missing a right leg got in touch. And now him and this pal get together every few months. And swap, so lovely. You know, Do they have good. the same taste in shoes, though? Because... Uh, yes. I think he said that he does have quite similar taste. I think one of them buys quite a lot more shoes than the other. So one of them's really winning. <laughs> <off the field. laughs> How do you go through that many shoes with one leg? Well, you well, it's you double the wear. Much, yeah. Well, I, okay, I guess yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I found out a fact which is not at all to do with boots. It's oh, just great. about it's about a man called Keith Boots, and <laughs> oh, he was a he was a policeman in Yorkshire, and he was found guilty of a range of offences. Um, one of which was keeping uh, drugs, hard drugs, in his washing machine, and he'd been stealing drugs that his force had seized and then selling them back onto the streets. Mm. And it's just because of this great opening sentence by the prosecution lawyer in his case, which was, what do you keep in your washing machine? Keith Boots had over 11 kilos of cocaine in his. <laughs> <laughs> just a lovely line. Beat that. 
<laughs> I mean that that's I mean that's a jury duty you want to be a part of. You're oh, like, yeah. this is gonna um, rule. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> I see it. That reminds me when we were talking about the Thames before and the guy drinking the water is there's a lot of cocaine in the Thames, isn't there? They did they I think they did a study two years ago, yeah. last year, where they looked at a lot of eels that were living in the in oh, the Thames, yes. kind of near Parliament around there. Yeah. And then they took them out and they tested them and they were all massively high on cocaine. So I wondered <laughs> if your guy, Andy, maybe when he has his <laughs> glass of water from the <laughs> Yeah, possibly. How can yeah. you tell an eel's high on cocaine? You get, you get it... a free one? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that works. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. It, it, it's true. I, I remember reading something or seeing something. Speaking of the Thames, the, the how many bridges were across the Thames and how many like the, the, just served as actual bridges? Weren't there like like massive like uh, – like marketplaces on these bridges. Like yeah. The bridge. so, um, it was London yeah. Bridge, was it? Or Tower Bridge? It was London Bridge. London Bridge. And there, yeah. It. And there were, there were, you would walk through it as if you were walking through a modern day street in London. Like they were really high buildings. They would go four floors high right across the Thames. We did a fact, which I don't think the guys believe me about, but if you went to a restaurant there and you ordered fish, they would open up a little hatch <laughs> and they would fish with a with a rod and they would pull up a fresh fish for you to eat on it. It was wow. a bizarre place. Because you've been sitting at your table for 45 minutes and you're <laughs> saying to the waiter, you know, how's it coming? And he's there with his rod. <laughs> and he pulls up an eel and the eel's like, oh my God, oh my God, this is going to be the best play together. This is going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I get a glass of water? Sure thing, it'll just take a day. But we'll be there on the table. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder how many, like, how much of that? Well, probably, it'd probably be destroyed by the water. But like, how much of that could have been found after, like, just through like pure like archaeological digs yeah. or whatever? Is there, is well, there the, been do any, you mean like, the, the stones of the buildings remaining? Like any, yeah, like any of that. Like, I think they were repurposed. I think a lot of them were yeah. taken elsewhere. You know, because oh, okay. a lot of it was dismantled. But yeah, and, and it survives. You can go to you know the parks surrounding London. Some of them have huge stone seats that used to be on London Bridge, which is kind of really? cool. Really? Yeah. Oh man. Well, but we need we need to just for like a week sort of drain the Thames just in one section and just <laughs> keep us down there because <laughs> a, this, on a special Christ. time team we have <laughs> all the cork boys. That would be fun. It'd be incredible. There's so many things down there. There's man, a I can't. Point. There's an actual writing font that uh the oh, yeah. creator threw in so it's a lost font we don't have it anymore um and no, no i'm not excited about a lost font i'm sorry <laughs> I'm sure. i know everyone below the video will be i get that people are into fonts yeah how was your training the thames pitch going dan it was excellent i had everyone on board until i explained my search for the font <laughs> <laughs> Is Dan. it the font of life? Nope. Just, <laughs> just another bloody <laughs> font. It's kind of like Ariel, but it's just slightly different. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and it just turns out to be Comic Sans. <laughs> yeah. Throw it back. Yeah. Uh, um, oh my god, I, I, I'm so annoyed that I'm going to have to say this, but we are, we've are we run out of time. I can't believe oh that. My god. So oh my god. So quick. Um, oh. Corey, thank you so much for joining us, man. It's so cool to see you again. Yeah. Oh, you guys too, man. Like when when the world returns to normal, I am absolutely jumping the pond to come and see you guys. So oh, yes, yes, get over here. You know, I, I think, will. I think this appearance officially makes you the person who's appeared on our show more than anyone else. Uh, you are on our. Can <laughs> I get a T-shirt? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll send one over. You're the best fisher. I will, I will wear it with pride. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining, man. And we'll see you when you come over here next time. And everyone else, uh, stay tuned. When we come back, we go, we're going back down under with the amazing comedian. We've got Hannah Gadsby. <laughs> Hello, everybody. That was fun, wasn't it? Well, now you have to pay. Please, please go to comicrelief.com slash fish and give us all of your money so that it can be spent on fabulous causes around the world. There are many more videos where these came from. So bring all of your money and give it to us. Link is below. Click on the link. <laughs>